Like and subscribe right now, or this spider will crawl on your face while you're sleeping. In today's video, we'll show you 10 scariest times people survived the impossible. 76 Days in the Ocean Callahan's epic journey began in Newport, Rhode Island in 1981 in his small 21.3-foot longboat. Callahan left the famous English port of Cornwall aiming for Antigua as part of a group of sailors taking part in a single-handed race. Unfortunately, he had to drop out of the race while in Spain. A wave of bad weather had apparently sunk a good number of racing boats and had damaged Napoleon solo badly enough for Callahan to abandon the race and get stuck in the sea. After almost 14 days in the middle of nowhere with very limited food and water, Callahan managed to spot a passing ship. This was a ray of hope for him and he quickly used his flare gun to attract the crew's attention, which simply sailed by without noticing him. This made him almost give up on life. After more than a month adrift, Callahan damaged his boat quite badly while trying to fish for his meal. After spending 76 days in the Atlantic, Callahan was finally rescued, but it took him another few weeks before he could properly stand up on his feet and another few to properly walk again. Stranded Inside a Volcano The filmmakers Michael Benson and Chris Duddy were out shooting some aerial clips. Well, they had something else in store for them, as suddenly, due to the heat fumes, the helicopter lost control, so they had to exit and enter the volcano. The men literally had to stand in the volcano of Hawaii. Chris Duddy was strong and athletic, so he managed to climb out of the volcano, leaving Michael. Yeah, that's the story of his origin as a villain. I'm just kidding. He went away to get help. Michael was literally standing above the boiling hot lava. God, imagine his anxiety. I would have definitely fainted. He surely was on the verge because of this intense, scorching heat. The time passed and passed and passed, completing the 24-hour period. Just when it seemed that all hope was gone, the man finally got rescued. I'm amazed by this man surviving a lava-filled volcano for a whole day. He even wrote a book about his day in the volcano. Real Life Crusoe Jose Salvador Alvarenga holds the record for the longest solo survival at sea. He was adrift for 438 days and traveled over 6,700 miles. With him was his friend, Ezequiel Cordoba said his own strong religious faith helped as he drifted some 8,000 miles from Mexico to the Marshall Islands. Floating across the Pacific Ocean for over a year, Alvarenga had battled loneliness, depression, and bouts of suicidal thinking. Wearing only ragged underpants, Mr. Alvarenga washed ashore when his boat supposedly floated into a reef on the small, isolated island. He claims to have survived by catching fish, birds, and turtles with his bare hands. Against the Dunes Mauro Prosperi was 39 years old when he took part in the 1994 Marathon Disables, a six-day race through the Sahara. The former Olympic pentathlete was lost in the desert for 10 days. It was all good, until the fourth day of the race, which was the longest and most difficult stage of the race where he was left alone. Suddenly a very violent sandstorm took him over and swallowed him. When he woke up, he clearly knew he was lost. All the poor guy had was a compass. After running for about four hours, he climbed up a dune and still couldn't see anything. So with no amount of water, the first thing he did was urinate in a spare water bottle. When his food stockpiles ran out, he ate bird eggs and beetles. He also killed and consumed raw bats and lizards he found near the shrine. Eventually, he found some dried up goat droppings and continued searching for more. He was found by a caravan. Despite starting in Morocco, Prosperi had traveled 180 miles. Unknowingly, he wandered into Algeria. Deserted in Sahara Emile Leray is a French electrician who frequently used to travel through Africa. On one of his endeavors, after crossing the first checkpoint, Emile countered some military officials who asked him to abandon his project and turn back. But being a stubborn man, Emile decided to continue with his journey by taking a longer route. After a certain point, Emile faced another obstruction. This time, it was more serious. Due to bumpy terrain, his car broke down in the middle of the Sahara when he accidentally hit a rock which damaged the car. He was stranded many kilometers away from the nearest settlement 
with only enough food and water to last 10 days. To survive, Luray had created a motorcycle out of parts of his broken car in approximately 12 days. When the police finally caught him, a heavy fine was levied against him because the registration did not match the vehicle. I mean, what the crap, guys? The man literally fought to death. Y'all are fining him for why he's alive? I bet this man can make an Iron Man suit out of scraps, too. 12 Years in a Coma Sarah Scantlin's life was beginning to turn around in 1985. She was a community college student who had recently joined the drill team and had recently been hired at a clothing store. Sarah and her friends went out to celebrate, but when she was walking back to her car, a drunk driver hit her. The night of fun in Sarah's bright future came to an abrupt halt. However, a miracle occurred two decades later and Sarah awoke. She was still unable to communicate verbally and had to be trained to communicate through blinking. At the moment, it was uncertain whether Sarah's mental powers were still intact. Sarah, on the other hand, was able to phone her parents after two decades. Doctors were surprised that she was able to regain her capacity to talk, but they theorized that her brain had repaired itself and restored some mental capacities. Sarah lived for another 12 years after waking up, but she died of respiratory failure at the age of 50. Is that color all right for your blush? Yeah. Okay. A sole survivor of the crash. You all must have already heard this one. Remember Baya Bakari, the sole survivor of Yemenia Flight 626, an Airbus A310, which crashed in the Indian Ocean near the north coast of Grand Comore on June 30, 2009? The accident killed 152 out of 153 total passengers, making Baya the only one to survive. Bakari, who could barely swim and had no life vest, clung to a piece of aircraft wreckage floating in heavy seas for over 14 hours, much of it in full darkness, before being rescued. Nan, I would have definitely let go. Horrified at the news, her dad was stunned to discover Baia was somehow still alive. Baia was convinced there were initially other survivors after hearing the voices before believing they succumbed to the odds. The plane was only seven minutes from landing at the airport in Comoros when it went off course before stalling and dropping out of the sky. And now, let us move on to our subscriber pick of the day. This image was sent to us by a subscriber. Similarly, if you ever wish to know more about an image you come across, well, just send it to us. Who knows, we might even feature it in one of our videos. Today's subscriber's pick is a picture of a boy named Des Heel, 13, of Lynchburg, who was rushed to the hospital with a bamboo stick impaled on his neck. Des had been playing a ninja game with friends and decided to put the bamboo stick in the back of his shirt it accidentally got stuck. Doctors were afraid that it might go through his artery if they pulled it out, and the leak may also explode. Luckily for Des, the stick did not hit his artery. Half Brain Man He was a regular person with a full head until the age of 14. However, after an alcohol and drug binge, he stole a car, got into an accident, and went flying through the windshield. Carlos smashed his head on the asphalt and doctors consequently had to remove a significant portion of his skull and brain to save his life. Thus, he became the man with literally half a brain. Despite the treatment, he retains most of his mental abilities and can perform nearly all of the tasks that a man with a full head and brain can. Because of brain plasticity and the young age at which this occurred, there was little deterioration in his memory and cognitive skills. If a section of the brain is removed when a person is young, the remaining portions adapt and fill in for the missing parts, allowing the person to operate normally. The Lightning Strike This man, Melvin Roberts, has claimed that he had been struck by lightning about 11 times. Even scientists are astonished by this. Some have even refused to believe that this could happen, but then again, we know so little about this phenomenon. It seems as if nature has a personal dislike of him. Whenever storms start to roll in over their South Carolina property, Melvin Roberts' wife makes sure she's standing at least 20 meters away from wherever her husband is. He's even been struck by lightning during sunlight. I mean, what are the chances? While describing the effects of lightning, he described that it cooks you from the inside out and he can't taste anything for days and days. He further said, if I could eat possum stew, monkey brains, and it would still taste like sulfur. He even has a collection of broken watches, all showing the exact times he was struck by lightning. That's all for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching the whole video. 
We'll see you next time.